<laughs> Let's see, I'm a lawyer, so I need paper, you know. Um, yeah, good evening, everyone. Welcome. It's really an honor for me to be here today. Um, thanks up front for coming all the way. And yeah, just giving me your attention on introducing you to public legal design and giving you a little hint of how public legal design as an idea and as a vision uh, can create better policies. So before we get started, I would just like you to, um, or give you a little story. So before I start to share with you what public legal design is and how public legal design can and is creating better policies, I would just like you or like you to take or take you to a story where there's a young, young girl with little curls um, just listening to her parents discussing paperwork. And from that discussion, she decides, I can solve that problem. Whatever these parents are talking, let me just bridge the gap. So she enters the world of university as the first in her family. She enters the world of law and she thinks, I can bridge the gap. Whatever these people were talking about, I can bridge it. But as she delves deeper into it, she just gets to the understanding the problem is deeper than we actually thought. And maybe you might have guessed it, the little young girl was me. So I'm just happy to share with you why I created public legal design and what kind of bridge I'm trying to get with public legal design. So you probably ask yourself, who am I? My name is Roja Tosun. I'm a lawyer by profession, but I'm also an artist, a creative, a legal designer, and I'm the founder of public legal design. But what most me, mostly actually encouraged me to do the work is I'm a community person. I founded several NGOs here in Germany in the field of social cohesion, and we're always trying to uplift voices of the unheard and unseen. So what is public legal design, you might ask yourself. So basically, public legal design is bringing design methodology and design thinking into the legal field. So I probably guess a lot of public designers are here, but if you just think about legal frameworks, I can tell you I've been through law school 10 years. Law and just like whatever is teached in law school is really far from design. But what I would actually, or what I would see, or what I actually see is that laws are strategies for our societies. We are shaping our societies with laws. So I think public legal design is about cre rethinking how we create and how we implement and how we enforce laws. And it's especially about making laws about the people it's supposed to serve. It's about putting the needs of people in the center. Because what I also think is we don't really need more laws. We just need our laws and rights to be enforced. So yeah, public legal design is a methodology. It's about bringing design methodology into the legal field, but it's also rethinking how we create laws so that they're deeply resonant with, with the aspirations of individuals, but also as us as a collective society. So just before we get started, I would really like to understand like how many of you were ever faced with the legal document and were totally overwhelmed with how to fill it or understand it. I mean, a little hands up is enough. Yeah, I mean, yes, a lot of people. I think it was more than half. So what I really see in law in general is that there is a, like a big disconnect between what law is and what law or who law is supposed to serve and the people who are actually like in, yeah, in the need of implementing and enforce that law. So that actually, that disconnect is where I see my motivation from. I think that law, especially because it's drafted for human beings, um, should be also like lived by the human being and human beings should experience the law, not just written, but in their life. 
So that's what I'm trying to do with public legal design. I will also delve into my project, but that's the motivation, the disconnect that is existing between the legal system and people who have rights but are not really able to live these rights for several reasons. So I will come with another story because I think it's just, it shows on many levels the systemic barriers people are faced when like interacting with the legal system. And it's a locked door that public legal design is trying to open. So last year I've been working in Guinea-Bissau, it's like a little country in West Africa, and I've been working on redesigning and decolonizing legal services. So we all know like legal systems, they have a lot of like systems um, within themselves that actually are more disconnecting people from interacting with the legal system. And I think that is just the extreme example or the most extreme example I could give to you because it adds also the whole perspective of colonial, colonialization. Yeah, right. So I've been to a village um, where there had been a courthouse constructed. And the question was if I could redesign the legal services of that courthouse. And I went to that courthouse and there was no person inside of the courthouse. Like nobody literally was inside of the courthouse. So I was just asking why they had constructed this courthouse when there's nobody. And I found out that the village actually are interested in interacting with justice and order and also on, but they had their own rules like for centuries, or like centuries maybe too much, but for years they were just like used to have their own traditions and like solving things in community. So that courthouse was literally in the end a goat house because that was the only living species I could find close <laughs> to that courthouse. And that actually showed me like we as policymakers or people who actually have an idea of, an legal, of a legal system are not really seeing always what is on the field and what kind of cultural needs people have or how we are raised in a collective society. So I think it's really time to bridge that gap. So yeah, I mean, I shared my vision with public legal design. Public legal design is about creating a cycle between the state and its citizens. It's about making and creating policies that truly serve the people and ensuring that every citizen feels seen, heard and understood. So you probably ask me or ask yourself, okay, but do you really embody that vision? Like what do you do in order to fulfill that vision? And I will just share some of my projects with you. I founded Public Legal Design 21 and since then I've been just on different projects, mostly in Germany on creating better policies. So I will just take you along the journey. Before, I will just like focus on how to create better policies when we're actually drafting them. I would also like to put a little attention to that whole topic of what or how the perception of the policymaker is actually also influencing the whole legal sphere. So what I do here is I'm working with future policymakers and I just did a privilege check game with them with the little constellation. I don't know if you know constellations in general or what a privilege check is, but I gave them several roles. And, when, and then I asked them questions. And whenever they could answer that question with yes, they were allowed to take a step forward. And in the end, that was like kind of the picture. And what I wanted to show them with that is that how we perceive people who are far away or next to us is totally influenced by our perception and lived experiences. So even though we are, could be or consider ourselves as the most democratic, fair, just person, we are still shaped by our, like, yeah, environment. So that project is really about awareness building and it's about, like, explaining policymakers, you're shaping the society. 
So there are a lot of people or a lot of groups you're not really able to see because it's just not in your lived experiences or like the way you, you've been raised. And I think this, this goes both ways, but I think in general, policymaking is also about seeing the unseen when we are really about creating better policies. So what I also do, and let's now move into the federal ministries, I work with legislators, law drafters, and enhance their toolkit with legal design methodology. And I will proudly say I do use a lot of methodologies and methods from the book Öffentliches Gestalten. Um, because yes, <laughs> I've been also through law school and I can just confirm Never in the 10 years I went to law school, I was actually teach or educated how to draft a law. It's more about how to implement it or jurisdiction or so on, but never really how to go into the field or draft a policy. And what I do with legislators and federal ministries, and that's just maybe as a side, a lot of people think that laws are made or passed in the parliament, and that's true, they're passed there. But more than the half of our like laws are drafted in the federal ministries. A lot of people don't know that on the streets, and I think it's something that you should know because, I mean, there are people sitting there drafting your laws, and I think it's important for them to like, be able to go into the field and also grasp what's going on. So yes, I do give workshops and work with legislators and law drafters and enhancing their toolkit with legal design methodology. And what I always do with them is I start with that picture. I don't know if I'm able to be ooh, as skilled as you, yes. <laughs> um, so how I would like to see it and also teaching it, I'm always telling them the law you're writing or drafting is the map. But in order to be able to draw a really accurate map, you have to be able to just grasp the landscape. So how can you actually grasp the landscape? Because once you're actually going into the landscape, you can see more. And if you go deeper, you can even like see who's living there, in which environment, what's going on, the weather, the snow, whatever. Um, so I'm telling them that legal design methodology is actually helping them to grasp the landscape in order to create the best map possible. So yeah, I call it a legal design toolkit. And um, I also like really changed the whole cycle of how, yeah, how like the steps of how laws are drafted. I just used a design approach by just having like a problem room and the solution room so and then enhancing it also with some methodologies and methods from also that book so legislators can just walk step by step and grasp the landscape in order to create the best map the best law possible and the feedback on these ones are pretty good like of course if you don't have much time that's another thing but when it comes to system mapping stakeholder mapping or interviewing people. I got asked the other time, a woman that has to draft a law to, I don't know, like working with a handwerker and she literally just asked me, yeah, but how do I talk with them? Like, uh, where do I find them? And you just have to understand, like they're literally sitting in the ministry. So like, are they even allowed to send emails? Like if they're allowed, who are they going to reach out to? Can they just go privately, I don't know, on the streets and talk to people who look like Handwerker? Like, these are literally <laughs> questions that people ask me. And I think it's super important to enhance these people in these methodologies so they're actually able to do so. And I'm not doing this to blame them. Like, I think this is literally a systemic problem, a systemic challenge. By, like, by my own experience, 10 years law school, not really once learned how to uh, draw, uh, draft a law. But I think it's also not really done uh, once the law is passed. It's about actually, and you said it as well, my dear colleague Sabrina and Mike, it's about like seeing also the legal system as a cycle and 
like law as a cycle. So you have to test, you have to see, right, how that law you has passed is actually influencing people if it's working or not. And that project is, again, from Guinea-Bissau. I was redesigning a legal service from the Ministry of Justice over there. So the law already had passed, but it was about to see if the law is really meeting the needs that it was supposed to meet. And we, I just started with like hiring a data team. They were interviewing both civil servants and citizens in order to understand the process and the challenges along the process. And I will just make it short. Like it, one of the main findings was that citizens have a huge need for orientation. So we just implemented um, like a first touch point. But that touch point was actually from the side of the state. So in the first learning cycle, that's what we found out. And in the second learning cycle, I just observed that people are not really using that touch point. Like there's some people coming, but they're still asking other people outside of the building. So I did another second data round, and I just found out that in this particular case, the citizens trusted other people like neighbors or whatever more than actually the state institution. So what I did then was integrating some NGOs. That's the lovely woman you see. And she's like from an NGO. And I just installed them in front of the ministry. And they were guiding people from there. And that really worked. And I think that's also like really important to see that legal and laws are just like a place in a vivid environment, like people are changing, environments are changing, societies are changing, needs are changing. Um, so it's just really important to check on legal services and processes here and there to just see if they really meet the goal or hitting the goal and actually meeting the needs of the people. So policy as a learning cycle is definitely something that worked <laughs> in Guinea-Bissau. I think it's a bit harder here in Germany. Like, it's not that I've been not trying, but yeah. I mean, we can definitely just say the work does not stop when the law is passed. So I would say, in conclusion, public legal design is more than just a methodology. Of course, it's about, like, through redesigning legal services and legal processes, redesigning legal systems, teaching legislators or like enhancing their toolkit uh, to make better laws for sure but it's not only methodology it's a movement a movement that really votes for having people seen and heard and just giving the right methodology to it at hand so i would say public legal design is about creating a legal system that is connected that is responsive and that truly serves the people. Yeah, that's in a nutshell. Thank you for listening.